Okay, I guess I will just wait to see if anybody comes in the chat. And then I will start. And for those of you watching after the live is over, welcome. Okay, it says six people are watching. So good morning. Feel free to come into the chat. It's just going to be a really easy going live. Let me just bring it up on my phone. Hi, Sandra. I need to bring it up on my phone because the the lag in the studio is really tends to be long for me. So let me just bring it up. And hey, Patty. How's everybody this morning? Or it's on, well, here, another minute will be afternoon. So did you guys get your Christmas shopping finished? Because I sure didn't. <laughs> I went out on Saturday with my daughter and I found one present. And then it just made me realize that for all the times that I wait till the last minute, I hate doing that because of the crowds. Hi, Therese. And yet I do it anyway every single year. I wait till close to the last minute. I feel like I need to be in that spirit before I start buying things for people. <coughs> Excuse me. And it never works out. <clears throat> so, yeah, I only found one thing, but I did get a couple things online. I just don't like to do a lot of online shopping. That's all. Because you never know if it's going to come on time and you never know if it's going to be the right thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Getting another cold, this weather. One day it's in the 20s and snowing. The next day it's 60 and raining. And Saturday it was actually raining and we went to a huge outdoor mall. So... <clears throat> but that's winter here. Almost done, Therese. Yeah, it get, and doesn't it get harder and harder every year to find things for people, especially ones you've been buying for, you know, your family members for years and years? I mean, the kids are still fairly easy because they tell you some of the things they want now that they're, you know, Maddie's a teenager, Mason will be one in May, but no, Sandra, I'm probably not. Can't you tell? <laughs> Are you in the Christmas spirit? Christmas is hard for me every year. It's hard for me. It, it just hasn't been the same the last several years. <clears throat> but my daughter is like Miss Christmas every year. So thank God for her because she gets everybody into the spirit of it. She comes over and sleeps over the night before with us and 
gets up in the morning so she can watch the kids open their open their gifts. She goes nuts every year, but that's her thing. I, I ask her too, you know, why do you go so crazy? You know, and she goes, because I, that that's just me, mom. I love to. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't have children of her own, so she likes to spoil, you know, Maddie and Mason and Ava and June. She's auntie to everybody. And then it's always really hard to buy for adults, at least I find anyway, especially if they don't give you any hints. This year I'm doing gift cards. Yeah, I'm I'm doing some gift cards for the kids too because, you know, they're at the point where they like to pick their own, like, clothes out and stuff, and I would never even try to pick those out for them. Unless they want something, you know, specific from a certain store. Otherwise, you know, I usually get them a couple of different gift cards. So that makes it a little easier, too. Yeah, Sandra, she's their, their favorite auntie. And she's uh, Maddie's godmother. So, all right, well, I guess that's enough chat for now. You got, oh, oh my gosh. I've just got to find a different way of filming so that I don't keep hitting that, the arm of um, where I have my camera. So anyways, I thought I'd come on just for a little while and where I'm doing that series, you know, the start to finish fabric book. I thought I would um, break down some appliques to show you how I do that because uh, when I'm making the book, I do use a lot of appliques, but I don't like to use them like as is, and some of them are too big to use as is. So I always like to break them down and kind of re, you know, reform them just for a different look. So that's what I thought I would do today. And then there's different ways of uh, a few different ways that you have to do it too. So uh, let's see. Let's take let's take kind of an easy one here. This one's this one will be fairly easy. Let's see. I've never I I have a few of these and I've never let me just get these out of the way. I've never used this like this on a you know, on a um, project because it's just, it's really too big. So what I usually do is I, um, I separate the flowers and I'm going to separate this one first. That's really, really easy to do. And then now with this one, it, it you can't really fussy cut those leaves. So I clip it off there and then I'll clip this off. And then if I want, I can always do something like this and then it, I might clip off these leaves. In fact, I will do that. Hi, Lorna. And then that way there, you can you can change it around like that. And you, because some of it's going to overlap like that, and you don't want to. There's no way you can cut that to look right. And then you have this large flower, so we'll cut this little piece off. And then I'm going to cut here, and I'll show you why. 
and we'll snip this off. And there and there. And then you can work with this. It's a matter of placing to, you know, to make it look right again. And then you have this one. And you can clip this. You could clip it off if you wanted just to use this flower. Or you can, um, like, I'll... Sometimes I'll unattach some of the leaves. We'll do this one. Just so I can, I'm depending on where I'm using it, I might want to manipulate like that. See, and then you can move this around to fit. However, you can cut it right there and just discard that. So that's that's one way of doing that one and then you get all this for one project or you can use more than one project all right i have to remember to keep looking at chat every few minutes so okay all right good so you're talking with each other too that's good okay so there's one all right now let me show you a different one this one here, this is one of Esme's, and I just love this. I have this in a few different colors. Um, now, you could you it's small enough. You could, if you wanted to go around, which I have, if you want to go around a picture, I might have just taken the leaves off or whatever. But you can also separate the flowers, too, which I've done. But see, there's, it's all stitched. Now, the nice thing about this is the stitching doesn't go from flower to flower. It's just the stitching in the middle of each flower for the um, seed beads and the sequins. Hi, Carla. So let's cut this up. So you don't have to worry about... Um, using your glue from from one thing to the other so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take this flower out because even these little flowers you can still use let me just make sure i clip it off here all right you can still use these and i like to layer so you can always layer it like you could put this on top and then put a little rhinestone or a little pearl there. And that gives you a different look. All right. So then we're going to take this flower off. Hi, Kat. Hi, Maureen. Welcome. I don't think you've been in my chat before. So here you have another flower and you could cut these leaves out and make it more dim dimensional by putting a flower on top of it like that. But I'm just gonna leave that, that for now. And then let me get rid of this thread there, okay? And then I'm gonna cut these two flowers and you just go in between the, the, um, the tool or the netting. They're not really, they look like they're overlapping, but they're really not. So this is a good, good example. Okay, so there you have another flower. And then what I usually do, I usually just clip these off and I either put, and I'll show you, um, what did I do with my boxes of, oh, hold on one second. Let me just open this up. 
work in that. All right, so for those I might I might put a clay flower in there. I don't want to do it now because I'm not sure what I'm going to use this project for. So I might put a clay flower. Let me get this piece of netting up there. Or I might take a tiny rhinestone button and put that in the middle. Because those seed beads are so small, they're hard to, it can be hard to see. Let's leave those up there. So there's another flower. And then you could, all right, let's take this one off too, though. All right, have I missed anybody else? Hi, Telly. Hi, Nancy. Not sure if I've seen you in my chat, so if not, welcome. I know there's a few different Nancys. All right, and then I'll leave those there for now. But I'm this one you could always put in a much larger um, bling piece, like it, depending on your project, like something like that, you could do. Now, let me take, um, let me just kind of, so here's, if, you, if you're trying to frame a, um, a photo, you could do it like that. And then you just put the flowers, because I always want to um, cover up the edges. And you might want to put this one this way and do like a corner thing. And then these, like I said, you could put that on top of there, that on top of there. And then then you could put a, um, a bling piece or a pearl, a flat back pearl. Aw, thanks, Kat. So there's another one. Let's put that to the side. All right, now here's a different one. Okay, this one is a, it's a lot like your um, wedding dress appliques. This is the, the type of, a lot of them have this type of applique where there's this, I don't know what it's called, but hi, Siobhan, how are you? I just watched a couple of your videos. It's nice to see you in here. Um, this type of stitching around, and then they add the pearls. Some of them have sequins. And when you turn it over, here is one that has the stitching of the pearls. Like it goes, it goes uh, from flower to see, this is gonna go all the way across it's a it's a continuous for some of them like these continue so you really have to turn it over and look before you cut so let's say i want to cut the flower okay so what i do is i look over and it's um continued over there and it's continued over there so I use, you can use Fabri-Tac, but it would take a long time to, um, to dry, I think. So I always use my hot glue. And you just want to hit the thread that it goes across to. So that way there, you don't lose any pearls on this side, and you're not going to lose any pearls on this side. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then I just take my spatula and I just press down and just kind of scrape it a little bit to the side. And then I know you're not going to be able to see it, but the glue is 
flat across there. So now I can cut it. And I'm going to cut it right along here and then right along to swallow the, the petals of the flower. Okay, so there you have your flower. And then you have your other two pieces, which you can use as a dangle. You can, you can mix your um, appliques if you want. Like that's not probably a good example because that's that has a color to it, but you know, it's something like this. If you just cut out the flowers, you could you could do something like that and you want three. So that makes three different pieces. And you can manipulate them in another another way than what they were, as um, I think it was more like a collar. Oh, thanks, Siobhan. Oh, yeah, we all have to watch Patty tonight, see what she's going to do. You never know what she's going to do. All right, now let's go to a larger one. This one, this is fairly easy. Now, this is a large collar. And I can't think of a single um, project that I would just use it like that, you know, unless you, I mean, some of them were made for clothes and obviously this probably was, but I don't make clothes. So <laughs> let me get this out of the way. And let me get those. Okay. So what I would do is first of all, I'd cut the individual flowers and you just cut close to the petal. Like that. Okay. And you. And when you're um, going to use them, you can cut a lot closer too to the petal. And I'm going to just get up and shut my fireplace off. And I should have done that before I started the live because it's getting hot. But just give me another minute and I will do that. Let me get back to that. <clears throat> it's really an all day thing. I'm cold, I turn it on. I'm hot, then I get hot, I turn it off. And then it goes in those cycles all, all day. All right, so let's cut these. And the nice thing about these is you can, you can uh, make them dimensional. And then you add a little, well, that's probably not a good example because it's hard to see with the white on white. Or even, um, you can even use that, just the little, the little buttons. That's probably, that's probably the best. All right. Or you can, you can make it into a, little cluster and then you add little buttons to it all right so i'm going to cut this these off quick because you get the idea with these so you have all these and you have those
Let's get rid of some of this though. And then here's a larger one. Some of them you just are easy like this and then some you just have to look at them and see what you can do with them. So there's a larger flower. All right, let's see what we got left. All right, one more flower. Just cut off some of this. Then you can cut it down even more. So let's see what we have left. So, all right, we've got this left. Now, this is the first time I've seen this applique too. It's been sitting in my drawer, but it's the only one that I have. So let's cut this. here okay and then we'll cut it down this way and I've lost sight of the chat oh good Siobhan I have to be in the mood to do it too okay what did cat beat you to Subscribing, maybe. All right. So now we have this piece here. Now this you could use. If you trim up all these little pieces, you could use that as a trim. You could use it to go around a photo or image. So I'm going to call that a little trim. Let's put that up there. Now these, you can cut these as leaves. They're not, they look a little modern. So depending on what project you're using. Um, all right, wait a minute. I got to see what Lana said. See, I was going to follow you, Patty, on the spelling. But after I followed Maggie the other day. <laughs> Right? <laughs> she did. She felt, no, it wasn't really the spelling. It was her name. I think I called her e either Shelly and it was a Kelly or I'm not sure, but that's what, that's, I remember that now. That was last week. Patty, Maggie, you sent me to the sewing machine. Yay. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, so anyway, these leaves are kind of on the modern side. Oh, yes, you're right. Boy, Lorna, you have a good memory. Mine is so bad. Um, so you could you could cut some of it, use it, you know, to go around, you know, to go around a image or whatever. Um, or you can cut the petals individually and stick them under flowers. But I'm just going to leave them like this for now because I'm not sure. Like I said, to me, I'm sure they'd work in a in like a junk journal or something, but I'm not sure how it would look like on a vintage looking project or um, on a shabby project. So I'm going to leave those. But there's another one. And then here's a fairly simple one. Now this to me is too big to use as is. You never forget your mistakes. But this one, I would probably, I would probably cut here. Just looking at it, I would cut here and around here. 
and I'd get two appliques out of this one. This would be a perfect dango for for like flowers. But you'd need, let's see, do I have a a flower already made? Um, let's see, I have some flowers that Let me just grab this. I don't know if this is going to be a good example. Irina, the passion for craft, is one. This is one of the flowers she made for me. But you can see, you can you can do a few different things. You can and you can build it up from there, like that. That type, something like that, and then you could do the same with this. All right, I would probably keep it like that and then put that and you could make like um, a snippet cluster with that. Well, I guess one of the good things about your memory not being that great is you forget your mistakes. So there's two separate appliques for this one. All right, now we got to put some of these out of the way. And then this one here, you could use this as is. No, let me see which way you, it would go that way probably. You could use that this way. It would just be a matter of did you want to cut it down a little bit? So say the project I was doing, this was too wide for. So I would probably want to cut around this flower. Oh, wait a minute, let me get the fibers off my scissors. Almost cut in the wrong place there. Let me take a look at it again, though. So let's go around this one. And then this one I would probably snip. Don't snip your finger, though. Just right there. OK. And you can use these. I've used these in my clusters. This you probably want to snip off. So there's a little, and you can use the tiny, if you have the tiny clay flowers, you can put those in the middle or little tiny flat back pearls, which I have. So then we're going to do the same on this side. And so there you have a smaller applique. All right, let me just, I feel like, let me take this off and then I'm going to catch up on chat. I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing chat, so I'll look at it on my, on my phone. I did a stupid thing on Saturday, and I'll tell you about that. Let's see. Uh, 
Thanks, Lorna. Thanks, Siobhan. Um, <laughs> yeah, I probably do too, Lorna. Stupid thing every day, at least once a day, right? But, um, you know, most of you probably know from, you know, I've mentioned it here or there, and I don't try to dwell on it or bring it up too often. But, you know, I had a few months ago, I had started having double vision. And it's been a couple of weeks now where it's been single vision. And I've had to wear my glasses with a patch on. And since it went back to single, um, I was able to take the patch off and just wear my glasses. Well, I've worn co contacts since I was like 19. And so I didn't wear, try to put my contacts in at all. I figured I'd let my eyes rest in that and just use my glasses. And of course, I couldn't use them when I, when it was double vision, because then I would have had to really wear an, like a pirate patch over my, my eye. No, I wasn't going to do that. But anyway, so I get up Saturday morning to get ready to, um, to go to, to go Christmas shopping with my daughter. And I thought, you know what, it's been a few months, I'll put my contacts in and see how it goes. And so I did, and it was a little weird at first because I have progressive lenses, but also my contacts are progressive, so I didn't think anything of it. And so um, I put them in about five minutes before my daughter came. We left, got in the car, and we're driving down the street. And I look up, and when you look into the distance, and there's n you know you're not necessarily focusing on one thing, I started seeing double. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. And so we made it to the um, to the mall, the outdoor mall. We we went right to a cafe to have some lunch because it was like um, almost one o'clock and we were both really hungry. And we get in there. And so I'm able to look at certain things or people and, um, you know, just focus on that one thing. And all of a sudden, everything was double just like it was when it first started. And I thought, oh my God, what, what did I do? And so luckily I brought my glasses with me in, in its case in my pocketbook. So I went into the ladies room, I took the contacts out, threw them away and I put my glasses back on. And so I came back out and everything still doubled. And I thought I just screwed up my eyes somehow. And I was ready to cry, but I didn't. I just said to Angela, I go, Ange, I'm seeing double. And I said, so, you know, just don't lose me. <laughs> you know, because it was so crowded and everything and we were going in stores. So anyway, long story long, um, after about 15 minutes, I went back to single. And um, I've been wearing my glasses ever since and everything's fine. So it is back to normal. So when I go to my eye doctor um, next month, I'll let them know that that happened because now I'm wondering, well, was it, you know, my blood pressure that made this happen or did it have something to do with, you know, between my contacts and my glasses? I have no idea, but I'm not taking any more chances. So anyway, oh, have a good day, Kat. Um, so anyway, it's all back to normal now. But I am just having a little bit or trouble like reading things um, that are small. So if I if I'm reading the chat here uh, on YouTube, it's okay. But if I look at my um, phone, which is so much smaller, then um, it's hard to see. Yeah, I know Siobhan, doesn't it? Sounds like my lenses. But I was just so happy when I started seeing single again, because I really did, you know, for a while scare myself that I had done something to, because I, the first thing I thought of was if I have to go through another few months of double vision, I don't, especially like with the holidays and everything, I was just like, I was starting to really get bummed, but I thought I was with Angela, I didn't want to upset her. And I just said, no, look. If whatever happens, happens. If I have to go through it, I got through it once, I'll get through it again. 
So anyway, that's um, that's my story. <laughs> So let's get back to the um, appliques. So that's a smaller applique. And you can do dimensional things too, you know. I like to make things dimensional, but I just, I didn't think of that before I gathered some things together to show you how you can do that. Always my thought was to show you how to, how you can do some different things with the appliques. So this one, this is, I can't even get, I don't think I can get it all in just about, not quite. But anyways, this is a really long one. So what I would do with this one is cut it up for like a dangle on a page or um, like going down the side of an image or even, you know, in a journal, a paper journal, you can use these pieces. So the, this one, you just have to look to see where you can cut. Let me move this, some of this out of the way. And then this is the, I think this is the last one I brought. So, and I didn't plan on coming on for that long anyway. So we'll end it with this one, but this might take a little bit because I've really got to look to see. Okay, Sandra, what are you jaywalking? A pair of reading glasses that are shades. So I'm crossing the street, I realized I had two on my head, regular shades. Oh, I've done that. One wonder could it be the liquid from lenses, an allergy? Yeah, I don't know, Siobhan, because I mean I've been using the same stuff for years and years, but I guess you can always develop new ones too. Hi, Note Spinner. I don't think you've been here either. If you'd like to let us know what to call you, um, you can put it in the chat. I'm a, and you know when I wore my lenses, I I my contact lenses, you know I wore the cheaters for reading, and I'd put them on the top of my head, and then like 20 minutes later, I go, where are my glasses? <laughs> Okay, Siobhan. Well, hello, Luann, and welcome from Alabama. I'm in Massachusetts. If anybody else wants to share where they are, um, Pearl and Button, who's Siobhan? She's checking on her potatoes, and she's in Ireland. I know Sandra's in California. Okay, so let's see. Now, see, this is one of the things where, see, this is overlapping. So there's no other place to really cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut there anyway. But I'm going to leave this leafy part here. So this looks like a full applique right here. Now what I I would probably do is I would cut this one up, this little circle off. And then there's there's one piece and you can you can use them in different ways too. Now this you could use it this way. And then you could even cut this one off if you wanted, but I'm going to leave it on for now because I'm not sure how I'm going to use it. Oh, three total. No, I haven't done that, Sandra. <laughs> yes, and Lauren is in Canada. In um, is it Nova Scotia? No, it's not Nova Scotia. Where are you, Lorna? Um, I forget now. See, there's there's my lack of memory. I've mailed to you a few times, and now I still can't remember what province you're in. Alberta, right. So 
So um, anyways, so depending on how you're going to use this, you could, you could put it either way. So there's one piece. Okay. Now this piece, I'm going to cut here. Yes, I know it's really cold there, Lorna, isn't it? And you get snow for a lot more, I think, a much longer time than we do. Siobhan had to mash the spuds. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's almost dinner time for you, right? It's a five-hour difference from here. Um, yeah, I actually had left some leftover little red potatoes that I sautéed in a pan and scrambled a, a couple of eggs. I'm still doing the vegetarian thing. The vegan thing was too hard. It's too strict, and I knew I wouldn't be able to maintain it for very long. So um, I reintroduced, after my 30 days vegan, I reintroduced eggs like once, but only once a week and um, no dairy though, still, except for goat cheese. That's my one exception because I think goat cheese is a lot milder than, um, you know, cow, sheep, wherever they get the, you know, other cheeses from. <laughs> and um, let's see. Uh, and and I will, in, I haven't yet, but I will introduce some seafood. Just um, maybe um, like white fish. And I, I love shrimp, so I can't imagine never having shrimp again. Um, but that's it. That's the only, those are the only other things. Hi, Debbie. Um, I'm going to stay as vegetarian as I can be. I didn't do it for, you know, some people become vegetarians because of, um, you know, their love for animals and all that. And I do love animals, but I changed for health reasons and because of my eyes when I had the double vision um, to thinking it was um, possibly my blood pressure and to bring my blood pressure down. So, um, so yeah, that's what, you know, that's my reason for doing it. And, and um, I go to the doctor Wednesday, see how much um, my blood pressure has gone down, hopefully um, into a really comfortable range. And um, oh, lots of butter, no butter anymore. But you know what, Siobhan, I found and I tried a couple of different butter substitutes not margarine but butter substitutes and um one of them was okay it was made with a coconut oil i don't exercise sandra i do walk um but i don't really do what you call exercise i know i should but i just i just hate it but i do walk i try to walk as often as i can um but getting back to the butter substitute um, I did try one with coconut oil and it was okay, but it left a little bit of an aftertaste. And so when I went back to the store the next time, I found it's country crock and it's a plant based, it's called a plant based butter. And it's made with almond oil. And so I thought, okay, I'll try that. Well, um, I brought it home. I put it on a piece of bread and it was just like eating butter. I swear I could not tell the difference. And I think it even has a little bit more flavor than butter. And yeah, a lot of it is expensive, Sandra, but this country crock, it's only, I mean, at my store, it's $2.99. Butter is more expensive than that. But everything else is more expensive because I try to by organic, I'm eating way more vegetables and fruits. So I do, um, I do spend more every week or every two weeks now. That's, 
that's just, you know, a given, but for me, it's, it's worth it. I use Flora light. I've never heard of that Siobhan. I wonder if it's, is it something over in um, Ireland? Yeah, I used to have a treadmill, Sandra, but when I moved, I had no room for it. So now I just, I walk upside, up outside and, you know, when the weather's okay. Um, and everything is good. It is Patty. Oh, it is something in Ireland. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I don't, you know, it's funny because I did eat with the, normally because, you know, none of the rest of, the, well, Angela's doing vegetarian too, but, um, you know, she only comes over on the weekends and my son and daughter-in-law, my grandkids are not there you know, meat eaters. So um, I don't usually eat dinner with them anymore. And it, during the week, it's kind of on the go anyway. Alan is works late a lot. And um, Maddie has soccer practice and basketball practice and all that. Well, anyways, last night, Rebecca made um, a pork roast, but she also in a separate pan roasted potatoes, carrots, onion, uh, I forget what else. So Angela was here and she came down and said, mom, come up and eat with us because of stuff you can eat. So I said, okay. So um, that's where I got the potatoes, the leftover potatoes for my breakfast this morning. But um, it was, it was really, really good. And it was nice to eat with the family <laughs> again. But yeah, I brought up my, uh, you know, my plant butter and put some of that on everything. Yeah, I love roasted vegetables. My daughter um, buys the oat milk. I haven't tried it yet. Does it really taste like milk though? I tried the almond milk and that I didn't care for. Lactose intolerant. Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of people are and they don't even know it. Yeah, homework time is right after school, Sandra. And then she has her her um, her sport practices in the evenings. And you know there is protein in vegetables. If you believe, you know some of the things that you read and and um, the videos you watch, they say there is protein. Something maybe not a lot, but there is some protein and vegetables. Oat milk is very mild. I'll have to try that then because I do miss cereal. I don't, you know, where, when I cut out the dairy, I miss cereal in the morning. I found the hardest thing to um, to think of meals is breakfast and lunch. Yeah, I don't like soy milk. Hi, River. Yeah, no, I don't, I didn't post anywhere that I was coming on because I, I, if it's during the day, I come on at the last minute because I never know when I can. And I haven't figured out how to post when I go on right here on YouTube. If I go on in StreamYard, then I know how to, but I, I haven't figured out how to, how to post it. I don't know if you can post before you actually go live. Maybe I'll try doing that next time. But no worries. I figured um, where I was actually doing something specific can always anybody that's interested will will watch it after I'm I'm done with the live too. I prefer almond and oat milk over regular milk. Yeah, see, I haven't had regular milk in a long time, Patty. So I will. I'll try the oat milk. A half hour reminder. Okay. Okay, Sandra, I'll try that. Yep, beans are high in protein. Yeah, I mean, other than the beans, there's protein in fruits and I meant, you know, like regular fruits and vegetables. Yogurt and cheese, and those used to be mine too, Patty, yogurt and cheese. Um, and neither one of them was good for my stomach.
Okay, Luann Luann says BRB, Sandra, be right back. So I don't think she's leaving, but in case she doesn't um, come back before I end this, um, yeah, I hope she has a good day too. And I love cheese too, uh, Siobhan, but I really love goat cheese. So, you know, I did bring that back in and I love hummus and that's full of protein, I think. Um, so there are a few things that uh, I'm lucky that I really do like, cause there's a lot of things though that I don't. And that's why the vegan was way too strict for me. Yeah, it isn't easy, Patty, going dairy free, especially after, you know, years and years. Yeah. The hummus, I like the, um, I get one, it's got roasted. I love onion, any type of onion I love, and it's got roasted onion in it. And I also love the like red pepper one. <clears throat> I do like pesto, but only if um, if it's not too strong. My daughter-in-law makes a, a pretty good pesto, a homemade pesto once in a while. So I wonder if they have like almond oil instead of using like olive oil or butter. I haven't checked to see if they do have that. Yeah, I love onion, Sandra, any kind, except raw. Well, I mean, in a, unless it's in a salad. Yeah, roasted garlic hummus. That's what I buy. Grilled green onion. That sounds good. Hummus is easy to make. Yeah, and I probably should learn how to make it too because I'm sure there's some, I'm trying to stay away from um, processed foods too. And for the most part, I have been able to, but I mean, like I know the frozen veggie burgers I eat sometimes, they're, they're probably processed, maybe not as much. I haven't had anything from a box in months now. Yeah, it is vegetarian, but when you're looking, uh, I don't know. I know it's better for you um, cholesterol wise, because that's something I have, you know, with my high blood pressure, I have to think of my cholesterol too. So I was just wondering if maybe almond oil, if they have it would be a better, you know, but Absolutely. I think olive oil is definitely better than vegetable oil. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it is vegetarian, Patty. It's also hard when you're to make things for just one person too, though. I mean, I guess if you can figure out how to make it in really small quantities, but is that is that good, Siobhan? 5.9? I'm not sure what that is. Ours are like numbers. Like I think a good one is like um, below 100 and something. So I'm sure it's just a different um, calculation. Coconut oil and milk is very high in cholesterol. Oh, I well, I... Actually, I didn't know either one was, Lorna. Oh, so I'm glad I switched from that coconut butter to um, the almond butter. Oh, it is kind of high. Okay. Yeah, I mean, some things like I just get a small amount of, like I love broccoli and carrots and I love um, snap peas. So. I just, you know, I'll make enough so that I I have it for two or three different meals. So that part's not hard. But there are some things like if you want to make homemade hummus or um, like a homemade granola and that, I think it's kind of hard to do it when you're just doing it for one, you know, before it would go bad. Meant to be a three. Coconut oil is good for you in moderation. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, 
almost anything except for things that are really, really bad for you is okay in moderation. But that's the problem. My problem was, you know, especially when I was eating, you know, um, packaged snacks and stuff. You know, what they say is one one serving and, you know, you read all the, I mean, I'm a reader now of the ingredients and, you know, the salt content, you know, all the contents and what they consider a serving isn't a serving, or at least it's not for me. Vegan vegetarian, organic. It's a lot. It is a lot. Eating a lot of Thai food. Oh, it sent it up. Okay. I am determined, Sandra, because I sat at that table last night and it didn't bother me one bit that I didn't take a piece of that pork in the other dish. Oh, I'll have to watch her, Siobhan, Domestic Geek. I do have a couple now that I'm subscribed to that are either vegan or vegetarian, and I watch um, looking for recipes. Hi, Shirley. Well, I haven't seen you in a long time. How's it going? I love Sue too, but Siobhan, the salt, you can't even buy a soup in, in a store, at least here in the States. And the salt content is through the roof. It's, it's really crazy. I mean, you can, you know, and there again goes the, you know, for one, I tried making soup once. Well, first of all, it came out horrible. I'm really not that, that, you know, I used to, well, I mean, I cooked for 38 years and, but it was more, luckily, um, my husband was a meat, vegetable, and potato guy. <laughs> I didn't have to make a lot of different things, um, but I'm not a really, uh, I don't call myself a cook. So, um, but to cook for one, you know, making like soup is, I mean, I guess I could freeze some of it, but like I said, the one time I tried, I screwed it up so bad. I added some, uh, pasta to it and way too much. And it sucked up all the, all the, um, broth. <laughs> and then, you know, when you put in just enough salt so that, you know, you think it's giving it flavor, but it's not hurting your um, your blood pressure. It's bland. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have tried some other spices, but I don't like really spicy. I don't like hot spicy. So that's one of the things that's really hard for me. Yeah, I love Chinese too. I, I will say Chinese food and Japanese food, I miss really a lot. I think I started to say, and then I, I got off track at one point when we were having dinner last night. Um, Maddie asked me, you know, Grandma, what do you miss the most? And I thought for a few minutes, and I thought, you know, Maddie, I don't really, I can't say I really miss anything in particular. I probably have to think of, think, you know, a lot longer. And obviously Chinese didn't come to mind you know, Chinese food, because I do miss that now that I, somebody's mentioned it. But yeah, the bland is trying to get used to too. But I'll tell you that almond butter helps a lot now, especially, I mean, I couldn't eat, you know, cook dry vegetables without something on there. So anyways, wow, I can't believe we I've been just sit, sitting here chatting for that long about um, eating and food. <laughs> so let's finish this up and then I'll finish up the the video. So I'm gonna cut here. 
I could talk about food all day. I'll tell you one thing, though. I think a lot more about food than I ever did before. All right, so I'm going to cut this off. And you can't always keep all the pieces, but <coughs> excuse me. Oh, my throat's so dry. So I'm going to cut this part off. And I have had Thai food a couple of times, but because um, my daughter used to love it too. But I realized I realized they do use a lot of coconut milk and oil. All right, so let's see. What do I want to do? This is like. Um, all right, I think I want to cut this part off. I'm just trying to think of actual usable pieces. And like I said, you can't always um, use it all. But you can always use these little pieces and snippets too. I don't throw them away until I absolutely have no use. And when I make the snippet clusters, I use little pieces like that. Oh, hi, Carla. Welcome back. All right, so that right there to me would be a good piece right there. So there's two pieces. Well, am I in, even in frame? Probably not. I'm not even, like, watching. Okay. So there's a couple more. Uh, let's see. So this piece, I would just take that off. These pieces are good. This looks good. All right, let's cut this here. And we could leave these on for now. You can always cut things off later, like I might end up cutting those off. But I always leave things on until... I'm actually using it in a project. So there's another pretty good piece. I think I'll just snip this part off though, because I don't really need that. Uh, okay. So there's another piece. And then this piece just, I would take these off. And I just did that out of frame, but that's okay. So then there's another piece. So I have three really good pieces to use. And then these pieces that are left over, I'll just keep in my um, snippet box for maybe um, some snippet clusters. So that's... Those are all the different appliques that I took out. I found it was a change of the way I thought about food. Yeah, I think about food a lot differently now, Carla. My daughter came over a few months ago, and she said, Mom, I want you to watch a video with me. And it was on Netflix, and I can't think of the name of it. And I sat there and watched it with her and it was, it was about, you know, vegan, being a vegan and um, it pertained mainly to sports figures that have gone vegan to show that um, going vegan didn't mean that you're going to lose, you know, that you're not going to have strength. You're not going to have muscle. You know, it was mostly men. Um, but the thing that, interested me the most about that video was they went to a fire station and there were 14 firemen. Um, I can't, I don't think there were any women now that I think about it, but anyways, they gave these 14 firemen um, groceries for a week to be vegan. 
And I will, Carla, I'll, when I think of it, I'll message you. And if anybody else wants the name of the video, um, it's on Netflix. I'll, I'll send you a message with the name of it. I just have to ask my daughter. But anyway, um, they gave them groceries for a week. And before they started, they took like their vitals, like their, they took their, they took blood tests and they did a cholesterol test. They did, they checked their um, blood pressure. They checked their weight. And I forget what else they did, but those were the three main things. So, and I know men are different from women. We all know men lose weight a lot faster and easier than women do. And especially the younger they are. And I mean, and I know um, since I started, I've only lost 11 pounds and that's not, I mean, I am overweight and, and 11 pounds in a few months doesn't sound like a lot, but a man probably, but you know, my age too, a man probably, you know, could lose that in a couple of weeks. But anyway, um, so they ate the, the vegan for a week and then they went back and they were retested. Every single one of those men that had high blood pressure lowered their blood pressure. Some of them were even able to get off their blood pressure meds. Um, their cholesterol went way down. They lost an average of, in that one week, they lost an average of at least five pounds, some maybe more. Um, but everything that was bad was good. Became, it went way down. And so that's what struck me the most about this video. And then they showed athletes. There were, there were um, pro football players. Um, I think there were four or five of them from, I want to say it was either the Texans or the Titans. And one of the wives um, was a cook. And she cooked for, for those five football players. And it was amazing the difference that, you know, that they got from eating vegan. They didn't lose any muscle. They didn't, they actually gained, you know, strength. They actually gained um, energy and all that. So, yeah, that, that I'm in this for the long haul. Hi, Shirley. 76 years old, and I'm following Dr. Michael Greger on YouTube. Well, I'll have to check him out. I'm 66, so um, I'm right up there. Oh, Lorna, the, uh, yeah, the 104. Hi, Patty Hoyt. Patty Seals drives your blood pressure up. <laughs> Patty, you're responsible. Patty Lang, you're responsible for Lorna's blood pressure going up. 130, 135. Wow, that seems high though, Patty. Well, the 130, the 130 isn't bad, but the 80 to 85, and Lorna, I think I misread yours, 104 over 68, yours is, I misread that, yours is really good, I wish mine was that low, I can't wait to find out what it is on Wednesday when I go back to the doctor. Yeah, and watching football gets my blood pressure up. <laughs> I can watch Patty and my blood pressure stays fine, but no, watching football, my blood pressure goes up. That's normal for you, okay? Yeah, Patty Lang, you're going to have to put a disclaimer up there. Cannot be held responsible for anyone's blood pressure going up. During my sale.
Okay, I let's see. I've been on for over an hour. I guess I should probably call it a day. Yes, pain ra does raise blood pressure and, and between arthritis and my and my back. I know that has something to do with it. Oh, but that's the other benefit that I found when um I went vegan and even just vegetarian. It, I think it's still true is inflammation went way down for me. And because of my blood pressure, you know, if I sat here for a couple of hours, I would get, um, I think it's probably fluid, you know, on my ankles and my legs and all that, that's all gone now. So like I said, my reason for becoming vegetarian is, is um, it's not a act as an activist, it's health wise. Yeah, all the white stuff I know. I know, Carla. When I went um, food shopping the other day, after Angela and I um, went Christmas shopping, we stopped at the grocery store and I finally got some brown rice. I don't really care for it, but I figure if I hide enough vegetables in it, I can eat it. <laughs> and I stopped, I stopped white bread. I buy oat nut bread, actually. Um, which I know it does have some wheat flour in it. And I know wheat isn't always good for you either, but I figure it's better than white. And what are the other potatoes? I can't give up potatoes. I don't care how white they are. I can't give up potatoes. Um, and what's the other thing? Oh, white sugar. I, I haven't had white sugar in, in years. I, I do use Splenda. I know it's not the best for you, but I've tried every other substitute out there and I can't get past the taste. So, but I've cut way, way down on that too. Tomatoes being good or bad? Lorna. <laughs> You really make, you do make me laugh. Yeah, that's the only time I use sweetener too, Siobhan, is in, in coffee. But I had to cut down on coffee because I use a lot of it in coffee. I have to have it sweet. So, um, so yeah, I've limited myself to just a cup every few days or I don't have it every day anymore. And once in a while, I do have um, the, um, I make the hot cocoa, you know, with water. I get the Ghirardelli dark chocolate, and that's really good. So, yeah, the inflammation in my hands, Carla, was really bad. And, uh, you know, from the arthritis. And, I mean, I can't bend my fingers anymore. <clears throat> My bones are fused together and um, the pain would be, hi, Bori. But now um, I'm not saying I don't have any at all. I do, but the inflammation has gone way, way down. Oh, yeah, I can't eat okra either, Patty. And I've never tr actually tried it either, but I, I just, I can't even try it. I have a texture thing and I have the, I've heard people say that sometimes it can be slimy. So that's all I need to hear. How are you, Bori? Welcome back, Luann. I wasn't planning on being much longer, but as long as anybody wants to chat, I, I'll keep it going for a little while longer. I ate my breakfast late so I can have a late lunch. And a lot of times that ends up being peanut butter and jelly. Because <laughs> luckily I really love peanut butter and jelly. You like fried okra, Carla? 
It's always slimy. Yeah, see, that's why I could I could never. Nope. It's a I have a thing with certain textures. I will say though, there are some vegetables that I that I never tried as a kid or even um, you know, as an adult cooking. And then my daughter-in-law introduced me to um, roasted cauliflower. I never wanted to do cauliflower. And the way she makes it is so good that now I love cauliflower. I do like um, almonds. I probably like cashews more than almonds, Patty. And I also, um, I also love, um, what do you call it? Um, pistachios. But I do like almonds too. And I know they are good for you. They're high in protein. I think the cashews are kind of high in fat, but I mean, I don't eat that many that I think I, I would have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've never tried the peanut butter. I'm, I'm a skippy, skippy peanut butter, but I probably should. But I think, too, of that those kind of peanut butters are going to be bland. But I should try. Yeah, I love cashews. Cashews and pistachios are my favorite. Oh, and um, macadamia nuts are my absolute favorite, but they're so expensive. Yeah, I have a hard time just eating one serving too, Siobhan. You do love fresh nut butter. You don't find it bland, Carla? Oh, my gosh, Siobhan, they're so good. But they're from Hawaii, I think, mainly, right? I'm sure there's other places that grow them, but the only place I know that grows them is Hawaii, and they are really expensive. No, I don't look at it as, as yelling. I look at it as I can read it better. <laughs> Add cinnamon if you need more flavor. Really? I never, I didn't think of that because I do like cinnamon. Yeah, see, that's my problem. I do love sweet things. I do buy the jams, though. You know, I don't buy jelly. I buy jam. Right, Lorna, just talking loud. Yeah, I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to do, Patty, play with seasonings. I bought a couple, like I bought a Mrs. Dash and I bought an Italian seasoning spice. And um, I just haven't made anything yet that I, I've needed it for. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. When somebody's allergic to it, it it's probably like if they're allergic to peanuts, you can't even have them in the house because just the... um. The what do you call it in the air? That's really scary. And cinnamon, the ground cinnamon can just go up in the air. Well, ladies, I think it's time for me to call it a day. It was, it was so good to, um, to be able to, uh, you know, talk about things besides just, you know, showing something. Vanilla bean fix fixes most everything in my world. Do you get them online, Patty, or do you find them at your grocery store? Because I don't, I don't think I've ever found them at our grocery store. You're allergic to Christmas trees, Siobhan. Wow. 
Yeah, we have a real, real tree. They just got it yesterday upstairs and they Maddie picked it out. It's a beautiful tree. She's taking all the credit for it. <laughs> Grocery store, but not local. Okay. Yeah, you know, I never thought to check with Whole Foods. They would probably have it. All right. Well, I I could probably keep talking and talking. And um, it's almost 1.30 here, and I haven't had lunch, so I should probably go have lunch. Uh, then I'll end up eating supper way too late. So thanks, everyone, you know, for sticking uh, with me and watching. Um, I don't know of how much interest there is in cutting down appliques, but I thought it was something to do. And um, it kind of goes with my, you know, fabric, making a fabric book series. So um, I hope everyone has an awesome day. And. Oh, thanks, Patty. And yeah, I hope you guys learned a couple of, you know, a couple of new things or tips or, you know, whatever that you can use when you're crafting. And um, I'm going to try in a little later this afternoon to do part four in my um, fabric book series. And I'll I'll put that up. So um, thanks, everybody, for watching. And I will be back with a non-live video. So I'll see you soon.